diamonds all in your face. What is going on, Houston, Texas? As you guys know, if you follow me on social media, last week I was in Vegas enjoying my wife's birthday, so we were out there kicking it. And as much as I had planned, you know, taking my stand, taking my mic, uh, to make videos for you guys, I really just never got around to it and prefer not to give you just some, you know, shit to just put on um, on the channel. So, uh, luckily enough, uh, today being a Friday and, you know, being able to deliver a new set of videos for you guys, um, one thing I'm going to try to do this whole week of videos, which is Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, I'm going to try to give you guys not only a video on the channel, but try to go live later on either tonight or this afternoon and discuss some of the things that we are posting, obviously based on these videos, any questions that you guys feel like talking about. But the biggest news in town to a lot of people, to me, to be honest, it's not a, a big surprise. But it is Jack Easterby and a Sports Illustrated article that came out and revealed a whole bunch of junk about what he has done since he's landed here. A guy who was supposed to set up your culture and create a culture, uh, really turned it into turmoil, as his video is labeled, turned it into chaos. And so, um, look, I, I, I think the root of this really breaks down to two things. Um, and, and I think you could be on the right side whether you choose either or. One of them is that Bill O'Brien should have really been fired after that Chiefs debacle that occurred. For you to be up 24-0 and then have no answer for that and the Chiefs just come back and annihilate you shows a sign of a team who's not committed fully and a coach who's basically reached his peak. So that's one scenario. The other scenario happens to rhyme with scenario mr casario who in new england basically when jack easterby came tampered the texans stepped back and decided to you know what uh we'll probably just get him next year and so nick casario ends up signing an extension with the new england patriots and decides not to come to houston and i think from there on the snowball effect began to occur because jack easterby who's not qualified to be any type of front office guy who really is only here supposed to be here to help you deal with those players who are struggling uh not only in their not well not in their craft but specifically with their mood uh decides that he wants to take not only on that role but begin to do everybody else's job and basically he gets caught red-handed uh having his hand in everything and so the fact that Nick Casario did not come to Houston basically opened up a window for Jack Easterby to uh, become, what, president of operations or vice president of operations, whatever the case is. With that comes, obviously, um, you know, from 2019 to 2020, you see Brian Gain uh, get fired. Um, you see Brian, uh, I think it's Chris, Chris Olsen. He gets fired. Uh, you got a PR person getting fired. You got DeAndre Hopkins getting traded. Just a snowball effect of a lot of crap. And to be honest, if and I'm going to put this in, 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 a, in a video that you can click for a lot of you guys that have subscribed after I've actually made this video. Early on when I started this channel, one of the biggest things that hit my channel was the Sports Illustrated article where DeAndre Hopkins was interviewed and a lot of stuff came out. And one of the things that I went to verify and confirm that this is this is a person who really had a problem with it was that in the article, if you go back and read it, there was mentions of not only DeAndre Hopkins' baby mothers and how many he had, um, and but also the fact that they had a problem with his dreads. What do you see from Will Fuller this year? He cuts off his dreads. DeAndre Hopkins gets traded. And so, you know, in the article of Jack Easterby, there's a lot of talks about him having conversations here and there where you hear him not saying DeAndre Hopkins by name, but saying we got to get that guy out of here. And so, you know, obviously we're not going to say O'Brien has completely nothing to do with this, but when they call Jack Easterby a snake, that's exactly what it is. If you think about religious term, him being a religious man as, as, as he portrays, uh, Adam and Eve, who comes and tempts them? It's the snake. So to me, that's a proper title for the guy because to be honest, I think he's influenced a lot in this organization and has caused a lot of turmoil in this organization. And really the only thing good that's going to come out of this is one, 
We finally got rid of O'Brien. And two, Cal McNair sees that there's too much noise around this guy. I got to let him go. Not to mention the amount of people who are concerned that Jack Easterby will somehow, if he continues to remain in this organization, limit or hinder uh, your ability to get the right person in here. Um, there's been brought up about Brian Dabal. We've talked about Brian Dabal and why I felt like he was not the right coach for this team. Another guy who was under that New England. Look, let's get away from that. If that's not the biggest sign for you to not continue to try to uh, pursue Brian Dabal, uh, I don't. I don't really know what is. And uh, at this point, I think we are facing the second biggest decision that this organization uh, is really taking upon. One, we had the decision to trade up and get Deshaun Watson. That's in the bag. We have him here. He is contracted uh, beyond his rookie contract. And now you have the decision to say, I can fire Jack Easterby and get the right guy. Some of the alarming things um, that come off. Uh, the last couple of days has been the fact that Tony Dungy came out and basically said, dude, I'm not part of a committee. I told them if they really want my advice, I'm not going to point out a particular guy because that guy's not going to work under me. So he might not work for whoever the head coach might be. So if you give me a blueprint, I can kind of tell you, okay, you're on the right path or you're not. And to me, that was alarming. Now, obviously, Jimmy Johnson, he, uh, whenever, you know, that came out on Twitter, it looks like he um, basically said, yeah, I am part of this committee. I've seen uh, Andre Johnson repost that as well. So maybe they feel like they are part of a committee. Uh, but either way, it looked like Tony Dungy is probably not having as much say. Or if so, he's saying, basically, look, when you have all this ready, I can give you my input. So that's something to be alarming because you basically have an owner who, in my eyes, I'm thinking he doesn't know what the hell he's doing. And that's the and that's the way that we got here this far because you weren't able to tell that Jack Easterby is a bullshit of bullshit. When you look at that article for DeAndre Hopkins, like there's no denying that you knew who who was behind that. You don't have to be a religious person. You don't have to have that type of experience to know how crazy sometimes or or, or how power hungry sometimes religious people uh, could get. And and trust me, I I've experienced it myself, so I knew how to tell that. But even even you not having that experience, you can tell when somebody is a manipulative, narcissistic person and and what they are doing as far as people saying why isn't he fired yet why isn't he out of the building yet well i mean i think cal McNair had a decision to make who do you fire first do you fire o'brien who basically had an altercation with jj watt on the practice field or do you fire uh jack easterby who's been doing some operations obviously you O'Brien having to coach and also deal with operations is probably going to be too hard. Uh, thank God that we have Cornell in the building because I, I honestly I I can't think of a better guy who could have been to your interim coach and deal with all this crap that he that I'm sure he's having to deal with. Um, and you know ever since you know the beginning of the season and and O'Brien being fired, you haven't heard from Jack Easterby. So obviously it's it's very evident that he's been trying to stay low. And I think the right is on the wall. Uh, but I've seen stranger things happen. Um, so for a guy to come in here who doesn't have a problem with Jack Easterby, it's probably not going to be your, your good head coach. It's probably not going to be a good GM. Uh, so I think the first thing that the Houston Texans must do when the end of the season comes week 16, excuse me, week 17 comes and that is over with that day, that afternoon, I'm going to Jack Easterby and say, thank you for everything. Go ahead and give me that badge and head out. Otherwise, you you really leave um, a space for that guy to continue to influence you in a way that has only taken you down the rabbit hole. And so you have to continue to, uh, you know, go on really flipping this page. And that's the way you do it. But anyways, man, like I said, we're going to try to go live tonight. Let me know what you guys think. Comment down in the section below. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. You know what it is every day, baby. It's H-Town. Let's get it. Bra.